Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series with me your host Guile and uh, I thought I would have a little bit of a change from the norm I've had a lot of replays sent to me from the community over the last few weeks and I haven't actually cast very many of them because let's face it Faf it's all well and good Faf is home to some of the great players of RTS but at the same time there are plenty of the rest of us who are normal average players or complete newbies uh, and it's not fair, you guys aren't getting enough airtime, so I thought I would make a bit of a change and play some, you know, average standard games as well. This one was sent to me by Jesus. There's a uh, sentence I never thought I'd say. I don't know what the map is, but what I do know is the entire thing has been fashioned out of peppermint. Um, but if, if anybody does know the name of the map, please feel free to type it in the comments section below. Incidentally, I've had a lot of comments from people... Uh, on the Ember Cup videos and on the uh, FAF videos asking about uh, what is FAF and so obviously I haven't been reiterating it enough FAF is the community driven client that was made by Zpilot or Zep um, it, GPG shut down support for this game uh, a little while ago and uh, this is now the only real way you can get any meaningful multiplayer experience all you need is the game discs installed or the game installed on Steam and the FAF client does all the rest just find the download link in the description to this video if you haven't already got it I do apologize if you're sick of hearing me say it but that is after all the purpose of these videos this particular match uh, that's been sent to me is going to be a 4v4 up here on team one both teams in incidentally uh, before I start have one of every single race um, so the cybernet at the top on here is going to be SJ Andrew next to him we have got Nick Hill playing Fim next to him we have Neville Werfer love the name bro he's going to be playing the pink breast cancer awareness Aeon and over here on the far right we have Kama Kama not sure how we're going to wear that and he's going to be going UEF and uh, facing him off is going to be the other UEF, that's going to be Major Pluskett. And uh, he's actually made an early move to the middle, looks like he's planning to secure this little ridge. And uh, next to him is going to be his Fim partner, Jesus. Next to him is going to be the Spocker, he's going to be going Aeon. And the Cybran at the bottom left is going to be Master Gambler. Scores look like they've been disabled on this, so not going to know... Uh, who is doing better on economy or anything else, but we'll just have to make our own judgments about what's happening as the game goes along. Jesus moving up into the middle. Gonna steal one or two little mass points early on. And uh, early engineer actually up to the top of the hill for SJ Andrew. Gonna grab some mass points, maybe decide to take, uh, get some kind of base set up here on the far left. Meanwhile, very early assault bot rush from Nebelwerfer coming in to try and disrupt the early production of the Spocker, but that's going to get easily torn aside by the ACU. Promptly gets up a mass point and now is working on a power plant and uh, looks like he's going to shove a factory or two beside it. Meanwhile, Jesus is sticking up a point defense, T1 point defense, in the breach between these two cliffs. And obviously this map uh, looks like it's got so many little narrow choke points, like the ideal place to shove PD T1 and T2 in amongst these little mountain areas. Um, so, yeah, it looks like that's a solid plan, I would say so. And he's also going to start working on a factory, it looks like. Now we've got uh, one T1 factory up and running for Major Pluskett, and uh, a second one nearly online. And uh, Kama Kama looks like he's got uh, the gun upgrade already, and that could be problems for Major Pluskett. He's not going to be able to contend with that in any kind of sustained fight. Lobo's coming in to assist, but that's not going to do a lot of good. Kama's just going to micro out the way of the shots, and uh, you can see already, even though Kama had a uh, slight HP disadvantage, is already losing out. Uh, Major Pluskett's already losing out in the fight with him, and he's still deciding to push forward. So slightly interesting decision there, should probably be on the ridge trying to get some point defense up, make sure that uh, his little fire base is safe. But instead he's going to continue to feed Kama, that's probably a pretty bad decision. And uh, Kama looks like he's going for a real spam heavy build, he's got a lot of factories queued up. Uh, which is quite c in contrast to his opponent, I mean Pluskett's got one or two factories going up down here, he's got two on the ridge. but. Uh, 
usually when you see people spam up a factory in a line like this, you know that they're they're gonna their attention, they're not spending time placing a single factory and, and you know, trying to secure area. They're just going for a spam heavy build because time is of the essence. They don't have time to think about where things are gonna be placed. They're just literally clicking and dragging. Line of factories, let's go. Um, so that's why I'm making that assumption on behalf of Kamer. Nice little point defense there going to work. Helping thin that out, but doesn't look like actually Pluskett's probably not going to be able to hold this. He's got uh, a lot of forces coming in from Kama now. And with that gun upgrade, his ACU is just far too powerful. He's decided to drop back and do an upgrade. That's probably going to be a gun upgrade himself or maybe a T2 upgrade. Meanwhile, over on the left-hand side, Master Gamla has managed to secure this ridge. It's interesting because that engineer for SJ Andrew did get there first. And a uh, small drop happening on the top ridge for Andrew as well. There's obviously these mass points on the top up here. And Nick Hill pushing very, very far forward with his troops. He's got the gun upgrade as well, it looks like, on his ACU. Yes, he does. Massive rate of fire bonus. But uh, it's got to be careful. Doesn't want to push too much, too far forward, especially with all this artillery here and jesters on him. Does his does his team even have the uh, inties to cope with that? I do not think so. This could be real problems for Nick Hill now. Going into the red, down to 2,000 hit points, 1,000, and that is going to be an early ejection from the game. Nick Hill is the first to leave. <laughs> and he's not impressed at all. Dudes, no air. Well, you did push a little bit far forward I have to say bro but uh, certainly could have done with more air coverage that was a, a nice pick up there from Gamla or whoever got the final kill but certainly wouldn't have happened without those jesters so good work there bro but um, meanwhile he's looking pretty isolated he's got a few mantis set up on the ridge but this is a nasty looking base that's been set up by Andrew it's got a lot of and oh, actually anti-air turret it's not PD it's interesting Get a few PD up there, certainly. But he is pushing out T2 units. Got some hot plights on the field. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if before long we see this little base up here fall and Gamla will be forced back to his main base. Meanwhile, uh, Triad's holding the line for plus good on the right-hand side. Managing to take out a few units here and there with his commander, but definitely Triad's picking up most of the kill. He's up to 19, so too far away from a rank. Gambler now getting some radar up. He's completely dominated this ridge up here. So definitely forcing Plusket back. And you just look at the amount of spam coming out from his uh, production facilities up here. Lots of strikers, lots of Lobos, some T1 anti-air. And you've got to feel if you can get enough Lobos in here to take out these triads, Plusket would have to retreat again. Interesting Plusket deciding to elect to, or deciding to place a uh, tactical missile launcher there, which is definitely a, an awkward place for it being so far forward when you've got this many troops heading your way. Little bank of T2 point defense here from Jesus, managing to hold back the forces of Kamer. But Kamer does make a little breakthrough down here, manages to take out that point defense. Most of the engineers down here for Pluskett. And uh, Pluskett's trying to secure this area obviously worried about troops coming in this way but I mean it looks like they can just kind of circumnavigate and come down this way obviously this map uh, promotes movement around many different directions but this is quite a nasty little fire base that's been set up by Nebelwerfer lots of T2 point defense and uh, Jesus promptly decides to return his troops back to where they came from it's probably a wise decision but uh, now Kamer pushing in for the kill on this forward fire base of Pluskett's. I don't see how Pluskett's going to be able to hold this. And that's going to be a huge waste of mass and energy going into building these TAC missile launchers, which are not going to last very long at all. He is getting some support in the form of T2 gunships from Jesus, but... Actually focusing quite heavy on, heavily on the commander. Kamer needs to think about backing up but he does come in and take out the rest of those gunships with his own inties and now Pluskett's going to be absolutely mobbed he's going to have to withdraw and that means he's probably going to lose this whole area as well I mean while on the left hand side Jester's moving out still doing more decent work with those Jester's he's also got some crosshairs in the mix and uh, just tidying up a little attack so 
This base still alive on the top here, not really doing much of anything, but uh, obviously very, very heavily walled off area for Andrew, preventing any attack coming that way. At least uh, hampering it. They could always destroy the wall sections, of course. And uh, Pluskett's uh, efforts in absolute vain just can't contend with this uh, firepower on the, the comm of Kamer having to withdraw again. And so many T1 units streaming in for him now. This does look like uh, the end for Pluskett. I mean, he's not in any direct danger as long as he keeps moving backwards, but his base is certainly going to be. Uh, over and done with. Mercy's coming in now from Nebelwerfer. Needs a few more. One more. Will this do it? 3,000 hit points. One. No. He just has too many. You can see he had 19,500 hit points to start with, or at least that was his max uh, amount. And I do believe it takes seven Mercies to kill an unupgraded commander. And, uh, so that's about 1,200 hit points. So he just didn't have enough there, but I applaud the ingenuity. Meanwhile, Spectre's coming in for Spocker, putting some fire on Kramer and uh, Crosshairs as well for Gamla but there's a lot of inties on the field, it's going to be very very close call cool whether the air gets thinned out before this comm goes down, he's up microing very very fiercely down to about 1300 hit points but uh, I just don't think they have the, the power needed to finish him off and uh, being as he's got 73 kills, he's a 3 star commander there is another renegade on him that will get promptly dealt with by his own inties. More gunships coming in now. Renegades this time for Gamla, but they sense blood. They know that uh, he's very, very low. They're obviously screaming to each other, but just uh, not able to finish him off. Meanwhile, Jesus is getting a little bit caught out here by some artillery, but uh, with some decent micro, he's going to be able to tidy that up. Attack missiles coming in now from... Uh, where's that coming from? coming from the back of Nebelwerfer's base so that little central point ideally placed for tap missile strikes and uh, he's going to be going after the mass looks like there's some popped here already mass and power would be a wise decision lots of tap missiles going the other way as well but uh, the relief of the land looks like it's getting in the way there not uh, allowing that to come to anything and uh, that three star commander just getting himself back into some kind of safe territory, building up some factories and a shield to get himself underneath. While Pluskett is absolutely fought back, he's going to have to retreat straight to the shield. A serious amounts of units now forcing in this right-hand side now that Pluskett's base has been eliminated. Looks like Jesus is going to be forced to retreat as well, maybe. Oh, one or two the Spectres out for the Spocker. And uh, Jesus has the own uh, the Finn T2 gunships. Like I always say, I'm not going to try and pronounce them. I refuse. But he should be able to make it back to his shield without any problems. They should be able to tidy this up. But how are they going to stem the tide of T1 units coming in here? I have no idea. Things aren't looking fantastic at the moment. It's a little bit of a PD war going on here. Cerberus versus Oblivions. Spocker just chilling with his comm in the middle. Slightly dangerous place being as there's uh, attack missile launchers very, very nearby. If he wasn't uh, careful, he could be out of the game. One cheeky scout on that. See if they actually know he's there. They don't, so uh, he's lucky. But I would definitely have my ass under a shield right now. Meanwhile, Pluskook managing to find himself in the middle of a whole army, an enemy army, once again. But... Uh, Nevertheless, he's doing a fine job. He's up to 131 kills now, so to be fair, he's a five-star com. So it's probably their best weapon on that side of the map at the moment to try and stem this tide from uh, Kramer, but uh, or Kamer, sorry. But it's got uh, it's got triads up, and uh, see how they're going to break through that without some serious weaponry. They have actually started um, an experimental assault bot question is whether or not that gets finished. It's all a question of whether or not Team 1 actually spots that going up. If we have a look at what they can see. No, so they've no idea that's under construction as of yet. But uh, map control firmly in the hands of Team 1 right now. Loyalists actually out on this left-hand side for Andrew and that base is finally going to go down. It's been haunting him oh, 
the whole game. So finally that is out of play and uh, Andrew manages to secure this map on the left hand side. Spectres going down for no good reason for the Spocker having not moved those easy inti kills. And uh, a lot of tap missile defense now in place for Team 1 up there. Spocker deciding to move his commander backwards as that base is basically over. It's finished. They have looks like they have spotted uh oh no, that was a ping from team two, I think. So just asking Pluskit to assist. I have to say the tech disadvantage well, the tech would be such a huge disadvantage uh against T1 at this point if that uh assault bot manages to finish going to be T1 because there's not a single T2 factory it looks like for Kamer so you imagine it would be all kinds of hurt unless they can get a good tack missile in or something attack I don't see any way they're going to stop that nope that that bot goes online so this is going to be quite interesting team one absolutely on the back foot in terms of territory in terms of units on the field but could be a game changer getting this experimental out at this stage. Shows you how things can turn around in FA. Imagine this base is going to be swept aside without any real difficulty in Cayman knows that he's decided to move his commander back to base. And that's finished off the missile launchers, kill the missile launchers. That's a horrible decision. You can see teammates decided to ping. Jesus, turn around. Kill the Tatnus. <laughs> uh, and there they go. They do manage to get one missile off. Which is probably going to take out something rather annoying. Looks like it's heading straight for this T3. Mass extractor it is, but obviously one missile won't take out a, a T3 extractor when it's at full health. It does, however, knock out all of the mass storage surrounding it. This little base looking increasingly isolated in the middle, but this bot going to do so much damage. It looks like it's completely unopposed, and Kame is not even going to try and walk his commander out of there. He's coming to pick it up with a T2 uh, transport. You can see they're pinging it. Looks like uh, <laughs> Spocker is trying to get up there with some inties past uh, a bajillion opposing inties, so that's not going to come to anything. But uh, air superiority definitely in the hands of Team 1 at the moment. You can see ASF's now out on the field for Nebelwerfer. Um, so it uh, doesn't look like there's many other avenues. If it wasn't for this assault bot, Team 2 would be in Sturm. I mean, the game would be over by now, to be honest. It's absolutely saved their bacon. Meanwhile, Nebelwerfer is going to find himself caught out here. You can see he's trying to construct a Colossus as soon as possible, trying to have something to com combat that that chicken but it's not going to work out well for him if he doesn't start moving his commander immediately and now he's getting stuck on one of his own engineers the question is has he spotted Neville Worth has come I believe he has the Colossus is getting in the way oh my god that would have finished him off right there you need to move that assault bot oh, it's getting away but of course all the time he's taking fire from the point defense oh horrible micro issues here oh my god the relief is going to come to the <laughs> come to his savior Oh, a savior of his commander, he's microing around, definitely didn't want to take that left turn, should have kept moving, trying to stay behind that mountain, hope that these gunships can finish it off before he's got restorers on it now, but I don't think it's going to be enough, and there goes Nebelwerfer's commander. And that has really opened up the game, so it looked like T, uh, Team 2 were out, down and out, but uh, lovely work there from Jesus managing to get that experimental up just in time. But uh, I think that's going to be the end of it. He's not going to be able to do much more of that. There's far too much air power on him. Strap bombers out and everything. And that's going to be the end of that assault bot. But it certainly paid for itself. Got rid of one of the opponents. And uh, has evened up the game once again. And meanwhile, it looks like gambler has been producing a hell of a lot of renegades and crosshairs. Nice going for some, for some kind of airstrike. It's quite interesting when you consider the air power that Team 1 have. Or I should say has. Because... Obviously, all that T3 work was going out in favour of Nebelwerther, but that's a fantastic bomb there. 
from Andrew, but look at the crosshairs going to work now. They obviously knew where his commander was going. They're going to try and go for some kind of comm snipe, it looks like. If they can pick this up, then it'll be a fantastic turnaround for Team 2. Renegades coming in to follow, and uh, with Nebelwerth out of the picture, they just don't have the air power to shut this down. And that will be the end of Andrew and I think the end of Team 1. You can see them going for some kind of attack on Pluskett. Poor old Pluskett is not allowed to even get any base left up. He's the least threatening member of Team 2. But uh, yeah, it uh, just shows you how a well-placed experimental can turn this game on its head. And I do like the fact that they haven't got uh, share conditions on. It's nothing more annoying when you go to all the work of taking out somebody's commander, taking them out of the game, and all of their stuff stays in because it's just been given to uh, one of their teammates. I think this is how the game should be played. When you die, your units die. It is, after all, the whole essence of Supreme Commander. T3 Air now out for the Spocker, and there's really nothing at this point that uh, Kamer can do. It's uh, looking like a foregone conclusion. going to speed this up a little bit. Lots of T2 units coming in now for Jesus, and they look like assault bots. Yes, they are. Uh, to be honest, even with that gun upgrade, not going to be able to do it. And came a surrender. So, GG's out all round. Fun little game, guys. And it just does go to prove that I do do play replays every now and again from the normal guys like you and me, Average Joe. So, please continue to send them to me. I will be more than happy to take a look. Can't promise I'll uh, cast everything, but I promise I will look at it. Um, thanks to you once again to Jesus for sending that one in. <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you guys at the next one in the meantime take care Guile out